Look, it happens sometimes. You're just saying that to make me feel better. <laughs> no, I'm not. Are you really trying to tell me that this has happened before? That with other guys in bed, you just start laughing uncontrollably? Well, no. I I'm sorry. Alicia. Neil, come here. Shh. Come here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what is the matter? Am I doing something? Am I making a face that I'm not aware of? Is this still because when we quickly changed positions, my left buttock accidentally turned on Showtime? <laughs> oh, Neil, look, I hope you're not taking this personal. <laughs> Alicia, obviously there's something going on here. I mean, this is the third night in a row that you've been acting like this, and the second night in a row, it's proven to be an obstacle for me. I'm sorry. I don't know why this is happening. I mean, this is horrible. I'm laughing, but I can't control it. God, this is really starting to scare me. Alicia. <laughs> I mean, what if this just keeps getting worse and worse and I lose it and end up like the lady upstairs who came to the tenants' meeting wearing a veal cutlet around her neck? <laughs> Alicia, you don't have to get that upset. We'll work this out together. What are we going to do? Well, you're going to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> therapy? I, I've never been in therapy. I guess the closest thing was the time I tried that isolation tank, but the attendant kept crawling in with this snorkel and a pitcher of Mai Tais. <laughs> I was thinking more of someone with a degree. I don't know, Neil. What if I go to therapy and something terrible surfaces that I've been hiding from myself and I start to lose control and... I'm completely unraveled emotionally. Well, then you'll have gotten more for your money than anyone else I know. <laughs> Alicia, as long as you're in treatment with someone qualified, you'll be fine. Well, your mother's a therapist. I could talk to her. I don't think so. <laughs> it's probably not a good idea for you to get psychological help from the one other woman who's told me I'm the only man in her life who counts. <laughs> You want to see a therapist? Neil, that's wonderful. It's not wonderful, that's terrific. I appreciate the vote of confidence. But <laughs> it's not for me, it's for Alicia. Well, I have a recommendation for you. That Kaufman girl you used to like? She has no problem. She's sharp as a whip. And Neil, she has a lovely bust. <laughs> Mom, please, I came to you for your advice as a professional. I've seen her in a bathing suit, Neil. <laughs> Mom. Look, dear. I could give you a name, but you know I am a therapist. And in a certain way, I feel uniquely qualified to be able to help Just you. Just give me a name! Oh, you see some mother! <laughs> Fine. Dr. Harold Solomon. He's on the faculty at Columbia. He successfully treated some very famous people. I can't promise she'll be able to get in, but let me see if I have his number. I think it's good that you're doing this, Neil. You need to find out if she could come to terms with any significant emotional problems she has before you get in too deep. Trust me on this one. Hi, Megan. Is Alicia here? She just got back from the shrink. I thought her session was over hours ago. Apparently, he let her go on indefinitely. I've been in therapy since I was in preschool, and my shrink never once let me talk past the end of my hour. <laughs> Except that time he fell asleep while I was describing how my mother dressed up our dog and our cat, and we all sat at the dinner table together. <laughs> but hey, what do you want for $55,000? <laughs> Frankly, I think this whole therapist thing is overrated. Although I did make a fairly good living as one for a while. <laughs> you know, Neil? You'd be amazed how many middle-aged businessmen will pay 500 a pop to be left naked in a forest by a complete stranger just because you tell them it'll resolve some crap with their fathers. Neil, I have so much to tell you. My first session was incredible. I wept. I remembered something I'd repressed since junior high. And I told them the dream about those Shearson Lehman executives who kept following me home. Oh, is that the thing I'd repressed since junior high? <laughs> anyway, 
Everything he said made so much sense. It was like he completely understood me. Neil, have you ever been in therapy? When I was seven, my, my parents sent me to a psychiatrist because I showed interest in an Irish Catholic girl. <laughs> I am so excited. He said he wants to see me five times a week. Five times a week? I thought he was totally booked. He had a huge waiting list. Well, he checked his schedule and said he could move a few of the Von Bulos. <laughs> anyway, it was great. I don't know why I was so afraid to try it. Everything just came pouring out of me. Like the time my father was in that raid on Entebbe and threw his back out tripping over a terrace and missed my birthday. And the time my mother took that private ski lesson and returned three years later with my new half-sister, Gretel. Wow, the only thing I talked about the first time was when my potty seat collapsed under me. <laughs> Great that you were able to cover so much in your first session. So what did he say about our problem? Damn, I knew I forgot something. <laughs> Oh, this is the young man you're having the sexual problem with. Every time he tries to get sexual, I start laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> and you don't think that's a normal reaction? It's just that it wasn't happening before. Now, every time he tries to kiss me, I crack up. Every time he goes to touch me, I lose it. Every time he takes his clothes off... I think he gets the basic... <laughs> How would you characterize sex with your last boyfriend? Uh, intensely passionate. Uh, I often saw vivid, exploding colors. And I once passed out and apparently started speaking in a tongue we think is ancient Sumerian. <laughs> would you like to hear about my background? No. Now, Alicia, I objectively evaluated the personal history that you gave me. I, I was amazed by that whole Pierre and the balloon thing. That is the most remarkable story, I, a balloon, and, and it just, and... Where was I? Objective, your objective evaluation. Yes. Uh, Alicia, no, I meant to ask you, that time in the Serengeti, did Raoul really blame you when his gun bearer was gored by the charging rhino? That was the least of it. Raoul said that because I took a shower from my canteen, not only did I distract Yambo, but I affected the surrounding herd of wildebeest and caused seven years of drought and famine. <laughs> and then he blurted out he might be my brother. Fascinating. When I was six, my brother Barry blurted out that I wasn't his brother, but that was because I got up in front of the entire school assembly and sang Johnny Angel without changing the lyrics. Uh, well, I've heard quite enough. Now, I think that I can help the both of you. Great. Alicia, your whole life to date has been defined by your relationship with men. And your relationship with men has been defined primarily by the physical dimension. So in order to form a more healthful self-concept. I'm going to recommend something for both of you to provide immediate relief and help resolve the problem. That is why the man has the reputation that he does. You must abstain from sex entirely. <laughs> My mother got to you, didn't she? <laughs> Surviving the end of the world can have some paralyzing side effects. <laughs> this is a human being who deserves to be treated with dignity. Hey, look, everybody. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Whoops. An all-new episode next. So, Neil, of all the things we've done in the past five days, which was your favorite? Was it the chamber recital? One of the plays? The Lipizzaner Stallions? <laughs> I have to say it was the Museum of Natural History walking audio tour of the dinosaurs. I really related to the Allosaurus. He hasn't gotten any since the Paleozoic era either. Neil. I'm sorry, I'm just starting to worry that we're going to run out of things that I couldn't also do with my grandmother. <laughs> Especially since we kept running into her with her best friend Lillian. Neil, I feel like I'm really working on myself in therapy. I mean... This abstinence thing is so concrete. Yeah. 
You really feel like we're making progress? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's kind of a relief not thinking about sex all the time. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> you know, I'm really starting to delve into some emotionally charged issues. Yeah, well, that's really the first step. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna have to ask you to put that egg roll down. <laughs> so, did Dr. Uh, Solomon say whether this treatment was gonna be short-term or long-term? Um... <laughs> oh, I finally understand why there are six billion Chinese. <laughs> Dinner's over. <laughs> Neil, look. We just have to calm down and get our minds on something else. God. Whoa. Oh, God. Whoa. I don't suppose you noticed, but I was reading in there. I cannot believe this whole therapy thing was my idea. Neil, with all the wonderful things we can do together, why is it all we can think about is sex? Oh, God. Whoa! Hey, I'm yeah. using this chair! <laughs> Let's send over the research. I'll get into it right away. Judy, would you change my lunch with Anderson the next Tuesday, please? Ted, Ted, look alive. Come on, work with me here. Hey, listen. You keep showing me up like this, and I can have photos, Doctor, to make it look like you're the one who wrote that limerick in the executive washroom about Rickman's wife and the incredible flying duck. <laughs> Son, Dad, you work your whole life. You scramble, you sacrifice, you burn the candle at both ends, and then a day like this happens and makes it all... What is it, Dad? Huh? Rickman like your cookie! <laughs> you have no idea what this means, Neil. It's the first time Rickman actually looked me in the eye since that wild Christmas party when I had a few too many, put a plunger on my head and said, Look, I'm Rickman! <laughs> Keep up the good work, son. Your mother's gonna be very proud. She may even let me carpool with the guy with the German cock. <laughs> Neil, you're killing me here. I don't see why my career should have to suffer just because you haven't had sex in... Oh, eight and a half days. How did you know how long it's been? Well, I figured it started at that staff meeting when you wouldn't let go of that giant mock-up of our spongy maladone. Don't misunderstand. There's a very good reason. Alicia and I are, are working at a kind of a thing in our relationship. Oh, yada, 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 like I care. <laughs> All I know is this cannot continue. I got to set you up with one of my old girlfriends. Just to tide you over. Frankly, Ted, I would find that appalling. Hey, think nothing of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, I'm not ready to pass her along just yet. Ah! No, not while we're still engaged. <laughs> Julie, she's great. She'll do anything you want, as long as you don't mind a retired army general watching from the closet. <laughs> what do you think? I think it's astounding that by now you haven't been found face down with your pants around your ankles in the trunk of a used Cadillac. <laughs> I can't take this. It's torture. I saw a woman breastfeeding on the F train. Next thing I knew, I was in Far Rockaway. <laughs> Neil, the F train doesn't go to Far Rockaway. I know. I had to change three times. <laughs> Alicia, I know therapy is a very private thing, but did you and Dr. Solomon happen to discuss how much longer this is going to go on? Not really. I haven't seen him in a week and a half. What do you mean you haven't seen him in a week and a half? He canceled my appointment. The only thing I have to cling to is the last thing he said to me. What was that? Don't sleep with Neil. This man should be brought up before a review board. Neil, don't be upset with Dr. Solomon. He couldn't see me because he's giving a series of lectures in Geneva. Geneva? He's not in Geneva. I saw him this morning on Regis and Kathy Lee. After his segment on codependency in the American family, he sang Sunrise Sunset with Topol. I can't believe this. How could he do this to me? This really taps into my feelings of abandonment from the time my mother chewed peyote with that Navajo shaman and left me hanging from a Joshua tree in my snuggly. Look, Alicia, maybe and that we should... time, she left me behind shopping at Harrods in London when the sales lady described me over the store PA and those Iranians started bidding on me. Oh, oh God, Neil. Hey, 
take it easy. Okay, look, we're gonna go see this guy, all right? He's got a lot to answer for. Not only did he abuse your trust, but it was because of him I was caught thumbing through Orgasm magazine at the newsstand while my rabbi was strolling by. <laughs> Reminder, move the Columbia lecture to Tuesday. A call Knopf about pushing the publishing date. And, oh yes, see if the urologist down the hall wants to go halfies on a new cocoa machine. <laughs> Dr. Solomon, what are you doing here? I believed in you. I trusted you. I even told you those incredibly embarrassing, shameful things Neil confided in me. That's right. What? <laughs> Neil, I thought he was trying to help us. Look, you've been avoiding Alicia, you lied to her, and now you owe her an explanation. You're angry. That's fine. Please, sit. <laughs> sit. You're right. There is an explanation. See, every once in a while, you come across a patient who, in your best professional opinion, will not benefit from therapy. Sometimes it's because the client is resisting. And sometimes it's because they're fundamentally, psychologically sound. Do any of those reasons apply to Alicia? No. <laughs> so what does? Uh, well, occasionally a therapist uh, will develop what is known as counter-transference. Freud spoke of the phenomenon whereby feelings thought to be decathected are in fact recathected and projected onto the client in such a way that it might result in what sometimes they professionally refer to as they call regression. <laughs> Could you put that in layman's terms? Oh, oh, you want that in layman's terms? All right, I'll, I'll give it to you in layman's terms. God! Did you have to wear that skirt again? Whoa, whoa, what are you talking about? I have to have you. I can't imagine anyone else having you. Especially some guy who likes to hum embraceable you while he's urinating. Where's your decency? Where are your ethics? Wait a minute. Are you saying I wore the same skirt twice? <laughs> God! What am I doing? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry that I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, this has been agony for me. Because of Alicia, I've had to go back into therapy myself. Do you realize how expensive it is? <laughs> how could you just abandon me? It was either you or a successful 25-year practice, a loving wife, a wonderful family. Let me tell you, if that skirt was one inch shorter, they'd all be sharing a studio apartment in Flushing. <laughs> That's the real reason you told us we couldn't sleep together. It's been very difficult for me. I have to understand inner conflicts raging. But thankfully, I have sufficient impulse control to resist any temptation. That's it! Go ahead, knock them over with that wonderful ass of yours. Stomp on Debbie and, and, and Robbie and, and Katie. I don't care. Wait, I want wait, you. What about your family? Yes. What about your reputation? I, what about the fact that I live next door to a malpractice lawyer who's looking to put in a sauna? It doesn't matter. I have to have her. You can't have me. What do you mean, I can't have you? I know where you live. <laughs> oh, no. I, I'm not going to do that again. Ridiculous. Do you have any idea what it's like to have people obsess over you all the time? Sure, free groceries, free dresses, the odd racehorse, that I can deal with. <laughs> but when I need help, I can't get it. Like now, I'm no closer to solving my problem than when I first got here. Who cares? <laughs> Wait. I'm supposed to care. Why don't I care? <laughs> You've got to care. You've got two human beings here. Yeah, one who's very vulnerable and a little lost, and one who's built up enough pressure inside to slow cook a chicken. <laughs> so, Alicia, is there any chance that... No. I mean, couldn't we just... Uh-uh. Well, in that case, I am a doctor. And... Here it is. Alicia has an abandonment issue from early childhood. Is it that obvious? Uh, a little. <laughs> Later on in life, uh, she sought out relationships with unstable, unreliable men. 
that would mirror those early experiences by ending badly. Men that were dynamic, passionate, virile. I think we're up to speed on that part. Yes. <laughs> but with you, she chose someone stable and reliable to break the neurotic pattern. But as you became more intimate with Alicia, her unconscious started seeing you as the adored love object. That part even I, I don't understand. <laughs> But as you became the adored love object that Alicia was once again afraid of losing, she started protecting herself with a defense mechanism. She laughed at you to keep you at a distance. When all I really wanted was not to be abandoned again. God, I'm good. <laughs> Alicia, how could I leave you? I love you. Oh, Neil. And that's exactly what my parents want me to do. <laughs> Neil, I'm not laughing anymore. This is good. Hey, Neil, my unconscious is crazy about you. You know, in this age of anxiety and ambivalence, it's nice to see two loving young people reaching across the wide gulf between them to achieve intimacy. <laughs> Doctor. I'm sorry. I am sorry. It's the skirt. <laughs> Thursday, Bart falls in love with Roseanne's Sarah Gilbert on an all-new Simpsons. Whoops is next.